Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Today's a fun video um, on how to use uh, these big uh, playing cards. So I got these at a thrift shop for $1.99 and uh, clearly they are nice and big. They're pretty uh, substantial thickness. Uh, so what I like about these is they're instantly ready to use. I don't have to cut down a 12 by 12 paper. I have a, a pretty solid foundation to work with. So you can find these in all kinds of different sizes. I mean, traditionally, um, playing cards are much smaller, obviously, but when you're thrifting around or at a garage sale, you might find some fun things like this. And these are from New Orleans. So uh, I thought this would be kind of fun to use today. So I started playing with uh, some ideas here. So this is, uh, let's move these out. So this is a book cover that I had started with the cards and the cards are underneath all the papers that I've glued down. And then I did another pocket, uh, some little pockets here with, uh, with another playing card underneath and another one on top. So you get these really stiff, rigid pockets. And then I take that to the inside of the journal so it's a flip out which is really fun I love doing these sort of things and then I have my little pocket here so I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you today my little process uh, what I usually do my train of thought when I'm crafting is I make several of them uh, so I'll sometimes finish the back and sometimes not finish the back because it's something I might glue down um, in this case there's a pocket here and I love to have these ready to use. Um, so because I have the full deck of cards, I know that I can make several journals with um, with these little cards here. So I know what size to work with. So this one I didn't finish. Here's another one not finished on the back. And this is just basically a master board. I just stuck down a bunch of scraps. This one I did another pocket with. Um, I'm using up my digitals too. I have a lot of digitals uh, on my Etsy store that I've I've never used. I thought, why am I not using my own digitals? <laughs> so I thought we'd use some of those today. Here's another one. Again, not finished the back. This is another digital print here. So let's have some fun. Get your scraps, get your glue, get your digitals if you have some, get your drawings, whatever you've got, and let's let's make some. Okay, so what have I got kicking around on my desk here? So I've got some scraps I took out. Um, these are some of my digitals that I printed off. And I love the black and white. I think we'll use something like this today and maybe a cream. So I, I took some of my digital prints and I printed them off on like this cream paper just to, just to do something a little bit different than um, the white. Just wanted to see kind of gives it a little bit more of a vintage vibe. And I printed several of my digitals off. And they're all different ones. Just to see how I, this one I printed on coffee paper. And I really love the look of that. So let's see which ones we want to use. This is kind of fun. Here's the birdie. Let's use the birdie. Did that one on coffee paper. Sorry, and then I just want to have a quick look through. And it's springtime. Some bees. Maybe one of these guys. I think I used this one already, so I'll leave that one. Mushrooms. Uh, I think we'll leave those. Please leave this one out. take that one, this one out. Sorry, I'm just going through here and see what I feel like using. Maybe a mushroom. Let's leave the mushrooms in. So you, when you purchase digital kits or print your own drawings, you can paint, uh, print them off on different colored paper. Maybe some one of these. It's kind of pretty. Many flowers. So I'm going to leave these ones to the side and we'll kind of decide as we build up our, our actual page here. And I 
think I had, I, yeah, I had some of these soft one left. So we'll, maybe we'll use one of those too. Okay, so now I've got my cards. I'm gonna do, let's do two. And basically what I do is I start gluing down little scraps of papers. I get my ruler out, my glue stick, which I'm running low on. Hope I have another one. And I basically just treat it like a um, big master board. And I have fun just gluing down. So it's a great project for scraps. Great project for papers and things you're not sure what to do with. And we all have scraps. <laughs> all of us. It's inevitable that we have scraps. down here and I basically just build up my backgrounds and hide the cards now maybe you like the idea of the playing card maybe you like that popping through or embellishing the card itself and this is folded in half so it's up to you and your imagination on what you want to do with it how you want to use it up. Hopefully I'm in frame here. And then I just have a bunch of little bits and pieces to use. Some pretty papers. I love doing this on like a Sunday afternoon. Just me gluing papers and just mass producing these little booklets that I can reuse over and over again in different journals and of course these are big cards but if you're making a smaller journal you can always cut these of course cut them down to the size you need now if there's a focal point on a piece of paper that you really like I would leave it to the very end to put down so that it doesn't get covered up in the process it's easy to cover up so if you wanted this butterfly, for example, to stand out at the end, then you can put that piece down last. I'm just building up layers here. And then I'll decide, do I want to make a pocket with these? Do I want to make um, like a fold open uh, what's it called? Folder. Once I've put some papers down, then I kind of decide. So we'll do a little book cover today is what we'll we'll do. And we'll go from there and see what we think. As you can see, I, I'm a pretty messy crafter. Let's put this butterfly. It might get covered, it might not. I don't worry about the edges too much because I was oh, I can always roll the paper over or um, cut it off, which I probably end up doing is cutting it off. And I just have fun gluing, sticking her down and gluing. And what I like about this is I tend to finish my journals when I use these kind of cards, just simply because I am. Um, I have made several the same size, so don't have to kind of source papers and things to make the inserts, if that makes sense. I love the creative part of creating journals, but I hate the actual building of journals, like sewing the the um, inserts, the, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the pages in, <laughs> what are they called? <laughs> It's early Monday morning. My brain isn't working. I uh, can't think of the word. But I'm sure you're all yelling it right now. You know the word I'm thinking of. The inserts of pages. And um, it's, uh, I hate, I don't like doing that part at all. I find it tedious. And I just don't feel like doing it. So my journals rarely ever get finished. <laughs> They're more like a... Uh, 
let's put them together and I'll sew them in later. So you open up my book and all the pages fall out, which is kind of okay for me. I'm just, it doesn't bother me, but it's not a professional finish. And I kind of like it like that because I can also change my mind about the pages, if that makes sense. I can say, you know what, I don't want that many pages in this journal anymore, or I don't want to keep this part of the journal, or it's getting too bulky, I can take some pages out. I kind of like that, it's not so permanent, does that make sense? I got commitment issues. <laughs> okay, let me get my scissors here. We're just gonna cut this off, clean her up a little, see if we need to add something. And I also find need to find another glue stick. I'm running out. Just gonna clean up these edges. You do want to make sure all your corners and everything are glued down. So take your time doing that. You can also sew through these if you wanted. It's kind of a nice thing to sew through um, if you've got a decent sewing machine. Uh, you don't want to break the needle, of course. Let's see here. Do I have another glue stick? Hang on one sec. Sorry about that. I had to find um, another glue stick. So this one's garbage. Do I have anyone here? All right. So again, just continuing on, gluing these down. Random papers. And you can do themes, of course, if you have themed paper. You can do um, different language paper, which I love. I find it adds so much interest because of the texture of the writing. I don't have any more language paper, like different languages. I love the oriental looking papers, Japanese, Chinese, all the, those writings are just so pretty. I think they are anyway, so they look like little mini works of art. And Arabic as well has really beautiful, they just look so decorative, their handwriting. I love that. Whoops. Let's just put a little bit of this down the bottom. Oops. I just want to finish this bottom corner here. Again, I hope I'm in frame. I have a new setup going on. I'm in my new studio, but it's, I'm back to a bit of a primitive setup until I get the things I need, which will be a little while still, like the lighting I need and um, a new desk. I'm desperately needing a new desk. I don't even have a desk technically. This is a table and it's quite hollow. So it's uh, a pain in the butt to use, but you got to use what you've got, you know? Okay, so there's our two. So then maybe what I'll do, instead of covering another one, so you, you get the point, I'll maybe just chop up one that's not very decorated so that you can kind of see how I put the book together. And then you don't have to watch me glue down another bunch of pages. Where's that plain one here? So what I'm going to do is slice this guy so I have a, um, a, a uh, I can't think, it's too early in the morning, a spine. That's the word I'm looking for, a spine. I'm just going to look for my cutter. No. A studio is at the point where I pull one thing out and like five things fall out. <laughs> So I'm not going to really measure it. I just eyeballing the thickness of what I want. But of course you can take your time and measure and get exactly what it is you're looking for. So 
there we go. I've got this. I'm not concerned about the rounded corners either because I'm just literally going to stick it down together. Um, but if you're building a book for sale or a gift, you're going to want to take your time and make things, you know, real nice and accurate and pretty and perfect. Um, I've never been that person. I just enjoy the crafting part and you get what you get in the end with me. So let's see if I can find my tape. Let's see here. Hang on. Okay, sorry. I've got uh, stuff everywhere and there's no point you guys waiting for me to find it. Now, I don't have much of this left. There might not be enough to do this. I might have to use something else. But this is just that cheapy um, first aid tape. But I love it because it's got a bit of a texture to it. And it's transparent. And it's cheap. So win-win. And I just throw this over my back ends here so I leave about an eighth of an inch just visually you could put something in there of course if you're not if it shifts on you or you're worried about it not lining up perfect so I just kind of eyeball it and stick her down come on there we go again nothing's perfect and I'm just going to stick that in tape and cut. Flip it over and just push these in. And I, this is the kind of journal making I love, which is just simple and easy to do. So now I have my little journal cover, but I like to bend my, uh, I like to kind of push and manipulate my spine a little bit. I prefer a rounded corner on my spines than I do a hard edge. I just like that look better, but that's entirely up to you. And you can see this cardboard is pretty tough for these cards. And then it'll get even stronger when you cover the inside. So there we go. There's our little journal case. So now we can decorate it. So this is obviously the front. Uh, let's see what we want to do on the front. So maybe we will use, um, let's pull these digitals back over and see what we would like to use on the front cover. So of course, use your sketches. I like the birdie. These are all sketches we've done on our channel, on the channel here. And uh, then I just print them off. So I'll show you how to draw one of these birds if you'd like to use a, a sketch of your own, which is always encouraged on this channel. But if you're not overly confident, these digitals are available on my Etsy shop. I like him, but he needs to pop. So let's figure out what we want to do with him. I think if, you, if you've watched me before, you'll know that I love to do kind of like a border see what we've got in our scraps here what we've got to play with that's kind of cool kind of grungy though eh? we've got some tissue paper we could stamp behind him that is really cool paper just kind of pull out some ideas I don't know what I'm doing so it's kind of going along with you there's some birdie papers that's pretty that's bunnies fun for Easter Okay, so I don't have anything to, there's some scrap of watercolor paper, which is always a winner in my book. So maybe I'll do something like this and leave a spot down here to embellish, or maybe maybe both sides. So of course, you can take the paper cutter and trim this up nice and neat, but that's not me. Okay, i chop this here. So I like to create borders around things. I find it emphasizes and visually separates the, the back from the foreground. You can make pockets, a tuck spot, a pocket here, a pocket there. It's really totally up to your imagination. So now I want to decide, do I want something that's going to fold out as well, like we did in the original here? 
do I want a page that's gonna come out from the end here? And if I do, I'm gonna wanna attach that first. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna use one I have already. So you don't have to watch me glue paper again. And all you wanna do is make sure that when you close your book, it's not too wide that the book can't close properly. You wanna make sure that the, the pages line up. So you might have to, if you're keeping a, a rigid spine, you're gonna to have to trim these a little shorter because they are the same size. But because my spine is curved, it has a little bit of flexibility in there. So I can use the same size page, which is handy. So I'm gonna hope that there's enough tape to do this again. I might just make it, ooh, drum roll. Got it. And same thing, an eighth of an inch, just to give it a little bit of wiggle room when it folds. Just straighten that a little bit. Oh, you guys have seen me glue things down before. It's always a struggle. <laughs> there we go. And just folding this now over like this. I'm gonna decorate the inside, which is why I'm not putting tape on the inside for reinforcement just yet. I want to uh, make sure that I have that. So now I know that this is taped down, I can decorate this. And of course you can do another one. So you could do another one going this way off this one so that it pulls out like an accordion. You can just keep going and going. Whatever, whatever suits your fancy, so to speak. Okay, so I think I like this. Off center. I think I will make him some kind of pocket. Um, I think I'll make him a top pocket. So up here. Okay, I wanna create the illusion that it's um, maybe kind of, I'm going to use some tools here. Let's see what I got. I got this from the dollar store. Okay. Try and keep myself organized. We'll see if it works. <laughs> I got these little split pins. So maybe we'll do that. I'm going to ink this a little bit first. Inky ink. Let's do slates. So this is a exclusive inks slate close to my heart. Again, just from the thrift shop. It's a bit of a grungy gray that I kind of like lately. I'm just gonna do the edges. And then, whoops, maybe just bring it in a little bit. Kind of dirty it up. Sorry if my camera moves. With whatever color I have on this smudgy tool right now. Not tons, but just enough. Enough to tone down the paper just a little bit. I'm gonna decide where I want it. Now, if I put four here, this could also be a pocket. So let's do something like that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna glue it or anything. I'm just gonna give it a couple of holes. Maybe a little bit more on the side here. I want these to match. So you can see it's not straight. But I kind of like that. It kind of adds to the charm. At least I think it does. I'm going to put one in and that will help hold my paper in place while I do the other four. And do this. So I'm a little limited on where I can put my holes just because of the depth of the distance in here. Uh, so if I wanted to put a hole way in the middle here, I would have to do it with like a pen or something because I don't have a tool long enough to reach that. I'm just going to fill these in. It kind of gives it a bit of a rustic industrial feel because it's got some metal in there, which I love. I love mixing elements. If I had little wood pieces, I would use those, you know, as long as they're thin, thin enough. And they're not too bulky in my journal. But there's something charming, I think, about mixing elements like papers and uh, metals and woods. So let's put this away for now. Put that out there. 
Okay, I like that. I might chop this side down. I feel like maybe it's a little too much. Let's just give him a little chop. Maybe maybe we'll make it the same and just put the, the bulk at the bottom. More of a focal point. I'm just going to rub this in a little bit with my... Just to soften that edge. Okay. Yeah, I like that better. It's almost like a Polaroid. And we'll just put that in here. Where do we want to put it? Maybe at the bottom corner. So what we could do is we could put just tape along here and make it like one big one. What do I want to do? I kind of like the idea of a pocket on the side and a pocket at the top. I've got that. So let's make the white a pocket at the top and this guy can be a pocket at the side and the top. He's pretty tight, so you can't fit anything too thick in there. But he can fit quite a bit. So in this case, I'm going to use double-sided tape. Let's just make sure I tape the right sides. <laughs> so the double-sided tape, of course, is going to eat up some of the pocket because you can't shove anything past the tape. But that's okay. I don't plan on putting too much in here. It's more of a decorative thing than anything else. And I'm out of that one. Use this one. And again, I could leave it open. No, let's stick it down. And that's why I love building these because every one you do will be a little bit different than the last. Okay, so is that what I want or did I want to maybe put something like this behind first? once it's down it's down kind of like the softness of this but try it let's decorate it see what we think so I'm gonna use a stamp where's my trusty stamp it fell on the floor bear with me a second come on all right I gotta pause it again Get my okay I'm back sorry found it I was on the floor way at the back of my desk. No surprise. So I use this stamp quite often. It's just a illegible handwriting. And like I said, it just adds texture and I love that. Okay, let's see if we like this. It might not stand out enough. I think it's kind of fun. Just to break up the, maybe we'll tear a piece off. Where's my ruler? My goodness, where's my ruler now? It's probably right in front of my face. Here we go again. Happy New Year. <laughs> Doing the exact same thing I always do. Really? Let's see if I can use one of these cards. I'll be all right. This is just how I craft. I kind of like it. I kind of think it gives a little something. It's very subtle, but it's enough that it just adds a little something to the book, which I like. Just a little pop up. Okay, let's do it. And you, of course, stamp anything you want. You could draw on there. Makes really nice scraps to use later, too. So we're going to double-side tape this because it's a tissue paper. So when you add a glue to it, what I find is it wrinkles really bad. Depending on the quality of tissue paper, the double-sided tape may show through, and it may not. Um, again, it's not something that bothers me, but... If you can see the tape, it might bother you. You might want to take the whole thing so that it just becomes part of the design. But like I said, it doesn't bother me. And I'm just going to fold that over. Okay, now we're ready to peel and stick this. And it just breaks it up just a little, a little 
something else then. Again, you can put another bolder stamp if you want, but I want to keep mine kind of soft and romantic looking. So I think I'm going to put this right here and then maybe build up a little cluster. Let's do it. And nothing's ever permanent, you know? You might have to peel it off and re-glue something. Sometimes when you glue something down and then you peel it off, creates this kind of neat residue that gets left behind also creates really cool texture so you can learn from your mistakes some new techniques which is a regular event here at the creative cove because i'm always making mistakes but that's how i learn from them let's get that piece of paper out of there if i can okay so now i have a pocket let that dry for a sec before I start pulling on it. Uh, I have a pocket here, technically a pocket here and here. So you can play with that. You can put in, um, if you wanted to use something like this and cut it down and slide it right through the bird. Uh, let me show you that. Where's my cutter? Right here. Oh, I found my ruler. It was right where I left it. <laughs> so you could do like a bookmark. I'm not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you that you could use this right through, something like that. So you could lace through there, whatever you want to do. All right, so what's next? I think I want to embellish down here and do something. So I have, what do I have? Let's see here, I got some tags. Maybe just put a tag here. A little pocket on the side you could do. Uh, what other embellishments do I have? Let's have a look in here. I'm going to cover the sink. And we're basically just crafting together today. So I have these little... I just glued a bunch of envelopes together. And these little plastic cheapy pockets to... Um, be pretty in there to uh, hold these little things for me because they were I was finding they were going everywhere and then I couldn't find anything when I wanted it like that one these are just numbers I glued down to uh, scrap watercolor paper and I really like using these so I think maybe a couple something like this Bring a few of these out. Just something to offset. I like the dark and the number. Something like this. But I'm going to get rid of the airplane. It doesn't really fit my style right now. So I'm going to stick this down. is a glue job so we'll glue this one and again just a little cluster and I think for this one I want it elevated a bit so I'm going to use some double-sided foam tape here and I just get this at the dollar store and it's fun because it elevates things higher kind of makes them pop Pop out a bit, put a little ink on this guy. And just tone it down a little. Kind of dirty it up and then double side tape the other side. Put that on and there's my cover, which I quite like. So this is just a laminated flower from my garden, but I'm just kind of using it right now. You use that and embellish it with paper behind and a little tag or something. So that's using some of my digitals finally. I would probably do the back as well. I like to decorate the back if you want to stick around. Maybe we'll do, let's do one of the mushrooms. I don't think I've used a mushroom for this yet. Let's use this guy. 
So we did all these sketches together on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you have some sketches to use. And of course, you, if you have a sketch and you love it, you don't use the original, just photocopy them, store them digitally if you can, and then they're ready to use over and over again. So sketching is worth it. It's always fun to sketch. And if there's anything you want to learn how to sketch, I always say, you know, leave that in the comment section so that uh, we can do it together. I'm more than happy to show you how to sketch something. If it's something I can sketch. Now, mind you, there's things I, I don't sketch well. I don't do faces well. Um, I don't do, people have asked me to do fairies and I'm not comfortable doing fairies because they have faces. And I don't particularly like drawing faces. It's something I've been practicing, but I'm not at the point where I can teach it. So I feel a little silly trying to show you how to sketch something I can barely sketch myself. <laughs> I am thinking of doing a Patreon account with actual drawing and painting lessons. I don't know. Uh... I'm not 100% confident on that yet, but if you guys think it's something you would like to see or would be a member to, let me know in the comments section. It would be greatly appreciated. Just so then I would know if there is interest in something like that. So it would be like additional content, an actual full art lesson kind of thing. And then there'd be crafts on there as well because I do love to craft like... Um, just fun crafts and also furniture painting and then hand painting things on the furniture i have a piece i'm really dying to get painting on and i want to do some magnolias on it but i want to paint my own don't really want to do a furniture transfer i want it hand painted so that's the kind of thing i would film and put on there but uh, i don't know if there's an interest so you guys let me know if it's something that would interest you so for this, I think I'm just going to turn it into a pretty standard pocket. Uh, if I could find my double-sided here. Just something a little, a little extra on the back. Uh, make sure I get the tape on the right side. Because that I'm notorious for. Oops. And then we've got a little pocket on the back. It's nice to decorate the back. Doesn't have to be boring, the back of the book. You put one of your sketches there, one of your mini paintings. And this will be the last step here. If I can get it off, there we go. And I'm gonna put it to the bottom so we could put a big tag in there if we want. Something substantial in there. Just gonna tag it up so you can see. Oops, my tape came off there. You use industrial glue as well. Some little sketches. I always have sketches kicking around. So I'm bored and I can't think of what to do, I'll just start sketching. Right? I'll put him upside down so he peeks through. No, I don't like that. Something like this. There we go. Oh, yeah, and we have a pocket here too. You could put something here. bangs into this one of course. I think I'm gonna have to reinforce that bit with glue. But there we go. So, and then we have this. You can put a pocket here. I had a corner pocket. I wonder if I kept that corner pocket. I really liked making it. It's just a piece off a scrap. So I won't do it now because I don't have a plain one to use. Oh, here's, no, that one's got a pocket. Um, is it in this one? Yeah, so this is also a piece of these cards and I just covered the whole thing in one piece of, and then just chopped it. And uh, put, I hand cut a hole here just so that it's, uh, I got my tag stuck. 
um, so that it has a nice little indent of a pocket and so you can see that you can put stuff in there. I think I'm going to have to buy better double-sided tape. This dollar store stuff just isn't sticky enough for thicker cardstock. So there you have it, guys. This one, this tape here is actually um, like a, a, a duct tape that I use to reinforce the inside. So you can use any tape you got. You can use sellotape and just uh, go ahead and have fun putting these things together. And like I said, you could even attach this to this, you know, and have it all fold in kind of thing and just keep going and going. So it's really up to you, but that's using um, some of your digitals that you might have or some of your sketches you might have and uh, how to embellish them and use them for these uh, little mini journals that are made out of lane cards. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Hope we gave you some ideas and uh, thanks for joining me, everyone. Uh, have a good day. Take care. Bye.